Hey everybody, Icy Cat here. Today we are getting our first look at the trailer for the remake of Hereford Base, both inside and out. Let's take a closer look and break it all down. Okay, so that was the trailer in its entirety. Now we're gonna slow things down a bit and take a closer look. So we can see on this first establishing shot here, we've got a great overview of the outside. This is the front of the base, as would be seen from the firing range spawn. One thing we can tell is that aesthetically a lot has changed. We've now gone to this very brick and concrete kind of structure, a lot of more old fashioned architecture going into this. And the firing range here actually slopes up gently and it looks like we may be able to ascend that hill and then use that sign and railing for cover if you want to engage anything on that front facing of the building. You can see that the exits out of that particular spawn zone have changed a little bit so you have slightly different approaches as you go up to the building. This is also the only shot we can see where the exterior stairwell used to be and it looks like it's still there. You can kind of see also in the original concept image that was shared with us a few months ago that that is something that's planned to still be part of it it doesn't really ever give us a very close look at it in this trailer though this next angle gives us a look at what used to be the garage section so that would have been like that red cargo container that would open up into the smaller garage section with the breachable wall on the exterior and the window and you can see that those elements are still retained here however it's no longer a cargo container we have the brick wall you can still see that we've got the breachable wall for the exterior approach and that window remains we've got some nice cover here also in the form of the half concrete wall and it looks like the structure behind may also be used to have some cover when you engage that window as well if you take a closer look up above you can see that that approach has changed significantly so the backside of the top floor rooms that used to be all exposed windows that would make those particular sites a little difficult to deal with have now all been boarded up those are actually all covered by what looks like corrugated sheet metal and will no longer be able to be approached through those particular windows. This shot gives us a great view of the other spawn section. So from here, this is where we used to have some APCs, which have now been replaced with these great vintage airplanes. Now, these buildings here are kind of what used to be before, but we have some different layout to it with that tower in the center. But you should still be able to get up on top of there, even if it's just with a rappel line, giving you some sight lines onto that side of the building then. If you go along the edge of it, this is where the school bus used to be. Instead, we have a heavily armored APC and you can get some angles there. We also get our first look at how the back side of the building has changed. This is what used to be the back approach to the stairwell. That would be the interior one that goes from the, all the way from the basement to the top. And then you would have that ladder with that yellow railing and you could bust into that and split the difference between the second and third floor. This looks like that section, but you can see it has significantly changed the way that it looks. We also have this exterior vantage point. This gives us some great cover points as we approach the building. And you can see that we also have an overhang here that allows us to get into the building from another side. Then we go to this exterior shot, which looks dramatically different than anything we've seen on Hereford Base so far, and really shows off just how much the design of the map has changed in an artistic sense. From the exteriors, we now go inside and we take a look at what we've got going on here. The art and texture work is completely changed. We've got a window there next to some lockers with some sewing machines. And up in the corner of the ceiling, you'll notice that there is a trap door. Next, we get a look at the redesign of the interior stairwell. Now, previously, this would have been the one that would have gone all the way from the basement up to the third floor. 
we're no longer sure if this stairwell covers the same amount of distance that it used to, but we can see that it transitions here from what looks like the top floor to the floor below it. And just by looking at this, we can see how very much the map design has changed. Of particular note is the fact that the hallway seems wider than it used to be, and we now have an overhang over the top there with that sheet of metal that kind of covers it and allows you to shoot over the top of it. Previously, that had been on the top floor, a wall that was completely solid, but it was a soft wall so you could open up and make a similar kind of murder hole in it. But now instead, the hallway looks like it's been widened with a panel of sheet metal there for actual cover. Now we transition downstairs into the garage, and this looks like it's been widened up significantly from the cargo container that it used to be. We also have a different style of vehicle in here, gone is the blue pickup truck, replaced with this old vintage car instead. The room itself has been widened out and allows for a little bit more gunplay or positioning in this room. Next up, we have a redesign on the kids' bedroom. So this used to be just off the second floor stairway, and the layout for this room looks like it has changed dramatically. The bunk beds are no longer piled directly against the window. Instead, they are more spread out into the room. I'm not seeing the playhouse anymore. That could be in a different section of the room that we don't see, but the floor mat is still present, and the layout of the room itself has changed significantly. We have some additional cover points and allows for some better maneuvering and some more interesting angles to be held. In the background there, you can see a door which seems to lead into the bathroom. Now, if you remember previously, that bathroom used to be next to the kid's bedroom, and it was just sort of a square room with an overturned tub in it, a toilet, and not much else. But in this shot, you can see how much that's changed. So this comes off of the back of that kid's bedroom. There's all kinds of interesting furniture and barricades in this room, and it should allow for a lot more interesting play here. Now we get a look at the redesigned TV living room that would have been off the first floor by the main door. We can see we have the trap door there in what looks like it's probably a pretty similar position to what it used to be, but gone is that tall metal cabinet that used to cover it up, and it looks like the furniture in the room has been repositioned overall. An interesting thing to note is if you take a look at the floor, that looks like it's wooden paneling on the floor there. And that's an interesting departure because you used to not be able to have any partial breaches from the ground floor to the basement. This could mean that this is a soft surface we can use to get access to that. Now, in a lot of the other previous interior shots, it looked like we were still dealing with hard concrete floors, but this floor in particular does stand out as looking like it's made out of a soft, partially breachable surface. Now we're going to transition across the hallway to what used to be the piano room, and I'm not sure if these rooms are still in their same orientations as they used to be or if they've been relocated entirely, but the piano room here looks like it has also seen a significant rework. You'll notice that the room goes deeper and it no longer has that straight boxy shape. The furniture has been rearranged. You now have a cover point to engage somebody on the window. And again, in this room, notice the wooden floor, possibly allowing for partial breaches. We close the trailer with an overhead shot from that same position where we saw the airplanes before. This doesn't give us a whole lot of new information, but you do see in the distance the clouds blooming with lightning and the rain is going throughout some of the other exterior shots that we saw earlier. So there is definitely at least some weather conditions present on this map. We do know that Hereford Base was done as a complete rework in order to address a lot of the problems that were inherent on it. Many of the objective types just were not very balanced, especially many of the bomb sites, which would be split between multiple floors or across halls, and it was just really awkward to play in this map. Basement was pretty much the preferred site, and if they have indeed softened the walls above the basement objective, that should make that site a little bit more vulnerable, while changing a lot of things that went into the other bomb sites or objective sites to make them more viable. This should make it so that there's not necessarily any one favorite pick. And while certain strategies will wind up lending themselves to ones that are favored over others, it shouldn't be as bad big of a disparity as compared to how it used to be with some of those objective sites being ones you just did not want to get because they were so bad. They specifically said that they wanted to go into this map redesign, making things as balanced as possible for both attackers and defenders, making it balanced to approach either defending or attacking any given site. The balancing combined with the dramatic redesign in artwork, the texture changes, the lighting, the weather effects, everything they've done to this map should make it feel like a completely new map, even though it's a rework of an old favorite. So what do you guys think of this new Hereford base rework? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe. Be sure to click that notification icon so you're alerted as soon as I make new content available. You can also follow me over at IcyCat25 on either Facebook or Twitter. Thanks a lot for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.